Alright guys, welcome to the sermon. Um, and as you're about to find out, um, I've seen in here that I get real excited when it comes to God's Word. God's Word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I have no doubt in my mind that's God's promise that you'll be blessed by hearing God's Word. So uh, sit back, uh, get comfortable, uh, whatever you need to do, enjoy the sermon. Amen. Good morning. Morning, morning, morning. We're just going to rock on with that prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. I was, uh, ever since the Lord gave me this word this morning, I've been excited to come say it. Matter of fact, I couldn't keep it to myself. I told some other people about it as soon as the Lord started revealing some stuff to me. And um, we're just going to jump off in the word today. If you can t turn to John chapter 3 for me, please. We're going to start there. I pray that this word comes out exactly how I received it. I pray that um, the Lord gives you revelation as He gave me revelation of His word. Um, the Lord says that when we turn to Him, He takes the veil away from our faces so that we can see. Amen? So as you turn into John chapter 3, um, I think it's good to remind the body of Christ. I know the Lord reminded me that's the only reason why I'm saying it. I believe it's, it's good to remind the body of Christ that this is Memorial Day weekend. But the Bible also says those in Christ Jesus are soldiers of Christ. Amen. And that there's people who have gone out into the mission field and have died. There's people who have gone out into the mission field and never came back. There's people who held up this Word of God and said that we're going to stand on this whether you want to throw stones or bring your weapons or not, and they stood anyway. We hear stories all the time. There's people right now that are in prison because of their beliefs. And I believe it, it, it should be an acknowledgement, obviously, to the soldier of Christ as well as to the soldiers that are in the house and to the families who have soldiers that have passed away and gone on and gave the ultimate sacrifice. Um, many of the disciples, all except John, were martyred for their service for the Lord. And uh, 2 Timothy 2.3 says that, Therefore you must endure hardship as a good soldier for Christ Jesus. So um, in your prayers I pray, or I want to encourage you all to pray also that we praise the Lord for all the soldiers of Christ that have gone before us to provide a word for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. John chapter 3, I wanted to read um, verses 1 through 16. Many of us know uh, John 3, 16. Many of us can quote it, but many have also not read what comes before it. And I believe the Lord has a, a, a scripture and a purpose behind reading these scriptures that will set the stage on receiving God's Word today. How many of you know that you can come to church and not receive what's being said? Can somebody not hand you a gift? Can somebody not hand you a piece of bread? Can somebody not hand you something and you go, I don't want it? Amen. I pray that today people receive God's Word because when you receive God's Word, it changes things. We know that the Bible says, For the Word did not profit them, for they did not mix it with faith. We have to receive it out of faith. Amen? Amen. Verse 1, John chapter 3, it talks about the new birth. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say, to you, unless one is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Verse 7, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If I told you earthly things, church listen, if I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? 
No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe those Scriptures, say Amen. amen. If you're a child of God, say Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all give the Lord a hand. There is something moving in the church today. I pray that we start to receive what God would have us to know. So many times I came to church and I did not listen. Or I listened and I did not comprehend. Or I listened and I comprehended and I did not do. We have got to stop doing that. We have got to move to a place and allow God to move you to a place to where now we're going to stand up and do the things in which He's called us to do. Amen? Amen? Today is an encouraging word. But the reason why I believe the Lord had me read the first 16 Scriptures out of chapter 3 of John is because God wants to establish something. He wants to let you know that... How many of you know that Jesus has never changed and He never will? God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen? Amen? And He wants us to understand that sometimes He's going to take an earthly thing and He's going to explain to you a heavenly thing. Amen? He will take something of the earth that you do understand and He's going to describe or explain a, a biblical principle or a heavenly thing. Today, that's what's going to happen. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all enjoy sermon illustrations? A visual. Amen? I, 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 it helps me understand more when I have something sitting in front of me or an example that I can see. Jesus taught this way. He, gave in, he, he taught many things in parables. There was 40-something parables that He said, see that right there? That is something that you see. That is something that you can touch. That is something that's tangible. That is something that you understand. Now take that and let, and let me describe to you a biblical principle. Today He's going to do that. If you have your cell phones with you today, hold it up. If you left it in the truck or left it at home, hold your hand up. If you own a cell phone, hold your hand up. <laughs> Put it down. Today's sermon illustration is going to go with you however long you carry your cell phone with you. And you're like, it's Memorial Day weekend. Where are you going with that? Trust me, when this first came to me, I was like, well, I don't know if that's the Lord or not. <laughs> that's kind of strange. But let's just go forward. You'll see. You'll see the point just like how He showed me. Let's just see what... Some, a few cell phone statistics out there. 90% of American adults have a cell phone. 67% of cell phone owners find themselves checking their phone for messages, alerts, or calls even when they don't notice their phone ringing or vibrating. Always checking it. How I many you know the Bible says examine yourself? See where this is headed, amen? 44% of cell phone owners sleep with the phone next to their bed because they wanted to make sure they didn't miss any calls, text messages, or other updates throughout the night. Now, there's some, there is a personality in here who wish that they could skip their phone across a pond. Amen? But most people have a cell phone. Most people understand cell phones. And on and on. 29% of the cell phone owners describe their cell phones as something they can't imagine living without. One time... Uh, I, <laughs> I saw, and I was like, whoa, Lord, we're going to, we're going to shake the church today. <laughs> I saw me up here with a box and saying, you know what? We're going to prove today how much we can be addicted to something. Everybody bring your cell phones up here, put it in the box, and we'll give it back to you next Sunday. <laughs> how many people do you think would go, you're crazy? <laughs> Ain't doing that. Amen. So this cell phone thing is something that we've got a hold of, something that we use every day, something that we're familiar with. They're used for text messages, internet, email, downloading apps, getting directions, listening to music, video chat. You can even check in. You can go to like a Brookshire's or something and say, hey, I'm at Brookshire's. I don't know why you would do that, but some people like to do that. I don't know why they do that. Hmm. So here, here, here's, a, here's a good statistic. 72% of cell phone owners experience drop calls. Some few times a week. How many of you experienced 
uh, static, somebody's breaking up when you're talking to them, and then it cuts off, drop phone calls, amen? Everybody, if you have a cell phone, that, that happens. Now, I know that many different denominations come to this church. Many people have come from different uh, ch churches, different denominations, and when they hear probably certain words said in this church, they're like, I'm not so sure about that, Brother Jason, but I, I want to encourage you or challenge you. If I ever say anything up here that is incorrect, I am not above correction. But I would ask you that you don't walk out these doors and talk trash about me. That you come back in here and we'll sit down we'll talk. And we'll read it through the Scriptures and we'll reason it together and we'll see where the Lord leads. So if you hear something in here, before you're willing to throw rocks at it, look in the Word of God to see if what I'm saying is true. Amen? It only makes sense. So there's times that we can have a dropped call. Um... I'm going to stop and pray. Father God, I thank You that we can come to You anytime. And Lord, I don't know why. Sometimes I'm up here preaching and just everything just left me. Seems like something just stripped all the thoughts from my head or where I was going with something. Lord, I'm asking for Your help today. I'm asking for Your grace and Your mercy. I'm asking uh, that the Word be sent forth today. Thank You, Jesus. And it's in that name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He told me what I was, where I was going. While during my quiet time, I had a vision. And you're like, oh, people have visions. Yes, they do. It's in the New Testament. Okay? Sometimes I just don't believe people really understand what they're seeing when they see it. The 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, For right now we see in part. We hear in part. We know in part. Amen? So you can have a little flash before you on something that the Lord God and the Holy Spirit is trying to let you know you're His child, those in Christ Jesus, and He's trying to show you something. When you see something like that, and it might be strange to you, ask the Lord to reveal what He's trying to tell you. Amen? Don't just stop there and wonder for the next two months and never know what He's talking about. So I saw a man standing there. I didn't know his face, didn't recognize him. And while he was standing there, he turned into a cell phone. I was like, that can't be the Lord. He turned into a cell phone and went right back to a man. It was just a little flash. And the Lord started showing me, He says, you know, there's a lot of people out there that say they're praying and they're not getting anything back. There's a lot of people that are having interference with their prayers. And then the Lord showed me this. He showed me talking to my father on my cell phone and he was on his cell phone. And as we were talking, it started to break up. I couldn't hear him anymore. It was just bits and pieces and I'm trying really hard and I'm starting to get frustrated because I can't hear what my dad's saying. And then I dropped the call. I didn't know what was happening. And the Lord told He asked me, He says, now, when that happened, did your relationship change with your father? Is he still not your father even though the call got dropped? Even though there was static and there's interference and I couldn't hear him? Is he still not your father? Amen. Well, yes, he is. He said, but did your fellowship change? Now it's hard for you to fellowship with Him. Now there's a hindrance there that I can't talk to my Father. I can't, it feels like I can't, I can't hear what He's saying. The Lord started showing me these things. And, and I, let's just see, just so y'all don't think I fell off the deep end about cell phones. Let's just see what cell phones are about. Cell phones were created. Somebody created a cell phone. So are we. There was somebody that designed a cell phone. There was somebody that designed us. We have a designer. Amen? There's different cell phones and there's different features. There's many people in here today, but we're different people when it comes to our personalities. And we have different features. Big, small, tall, doesn't matter, white, black, doesn't matter, different cultures. We're all different, but we're all still people. Amen? Amen? We still, all, all throughout the day, we go around communicating with people. And if you're a child of God, you go around communicating with the Lord. Amen? Amen. I laughed when the Lord showed me this. He said, your cell phone has buttons. Y'all have buttons you can push and get a different reaction out of. There are certain buttons I can pull off my cell phone right now. I go to settings and I can jack this phone up real quick. And I'll need somebody's help, that somebody that knows more about it, to help me get it back right. Amen. If you're really mean, you can go in and set the, their phone to a different language and they're really messed up now. <laughs> Amen. There are certain things that we can go through life and our settings got jacked up. And we have to go to somebody that knows more than we do to get it to be fixed. 
And the Lord started showing me this. He said, you know, people, if they have messing, their cell phone keeps messing up, they'll go into their, their, uh, their cell phone stores. He says, and this is how my people treat me. He says, you go in there, imagine this, say, yeah, um, my, I get dropped calls and I'm, like, everything's messing up. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a high-tech redneck. I, that's why I come to you. you. You fix it. Amen? He says, when they come there to ask to fix it, they say, okay, what's, what's the problem with your phone? Well, I tell them my issues that I'm having. And as soon as I tell them the issues that I'm having, he says, okay, give me your phone, let me fix it. And you go like this, no, you ain't going to touch my phone. <laughs> he says, okay, well, if you... If you won't let me touch your phone, can I give you the instructions on how to fix it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, this is how you fix problem A. Go to your settings. No, I don't want to go to my settings. Well, brother, you won't give me your phone to fix it. You won't listen to my instructions on how to fix it. Have fun with your jacked up phone. <laughs> Amen? There's many times we come in the church house and we're like, Lord, I need some help. Don't touch me. Well, I'll listen to the instructions, but I don't know if that's biblical. I'm not going to try that one. And we find ourselves in a predicament that our communication with the Father, we're, you know, there's people in here that are true children of God. They have no doubt if they died today, they would be with the Lord in heaven. But their settings are jacked up and they just don't understand how to get it back right. How do I get my communication back right with the Lord? Today we're going to learn how. Amen? This, this sermon could go on literally for days and it could probably go on even more if you knew more about um, cell phones and stuff. But basically, we're going to talk about um, six different ways that your fellowship can get messed up with the Lord. Either your prayer life with God or your walk with the Lord or your fellowship with the Lord can get really frustrating because you're not hearing from Him anymore or it can just flat out feel like it just dropped the call. I don't hear nothing anymore. Amen. One of the first reasons is, is with the cell phone, there's software glitches there's, and there's technical issues. Number two is geographical locations. Everybody knows you go down this creek bottom and it's going to cut off. I can go down here on Bethel Canyon and if I'm talking to you, the phone call is going to end. I can go down here at 160 in uh, Bethel Canyon. It's going to end there. Northbound 75 right around Melissa Road. If I'm talking to you, it's about to cut me off. There are certain locations that, that when I get to it, it's just going to cut off. So geographical locations, believe it or not, that the battery life, a low battery, can cause a, a phone call to get kicked off. More susceptible for it to be kicked off. Number four is the weather. Uh, number five is overload of signals. And number six is the service area boundaries. Y'all turn to Isaiah 58, please. We're going to see... How this relates to our walk with the Lord, our prayer life with the Lord, our fellowship with the Lord. And I pray it helps you. I pray that it encourages you. I pray that it equips you. I pray that every time you look at your cell phone from here on out, that you never see your cell phone the same again. I pray it's a constant reminder of Jesus loves you. I pray that it's a constant reminder that He wants to communicate with you. Hey Amen. Here's you one. You know that... The Lord has a really long text message for everybody in here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 58 verse 1. We're going to see how this God Himself through the prophet Isaiah shows us how our communication gets jacked. Verse 1. It says, Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your labors. They're sitting there going, look, I'm doing all this stuff and I'm still not hearing from you. Lord, did you not see that I fasted? Did you not see that I've done all these things? How many of you know that you can do a spiritual thing with flesh intentions? Amen? You can do a spiritual thing with flesh intentions. And we're going to see through the Scriptures that when you're doing it all for yourself, when it's all about you, that's when communication gets jacked up. If you start doing it for others... Lines of communication just opens up. Amen? 
It says, in fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your labors. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate, and you strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? Is that the Lord leading you to do that, or is that you leading yourself to do that? He said, those who are led by the Spirit, those are children of God. You have to be led by the Spirit. A day of, uh, for a man to afflict his soul is to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes. Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day in the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? All right, he's switching gears here. He's saying this is how the communication gets back right. To loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out, when you see the naked that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall bring, spring forth speedily. Not just healing, speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. Did we hear that? You shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and He will say, Here I am. We went from all about us to all about other people, serving people, serving Him, being led by the Spirit. Amen? Y'all fast forward to uh, chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. He says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor His ear heavy, that it cannot hear. It is not the Lord's end of the communication that the issue, the, the issue of the communication is always on our end. It's always. He's a perfect and holy God. Verse 2, But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden His face from you, so that He will not hear. And y'all listen again. I want to remind everybody because I want the enemy whispering in your ear saying that you can lose your salvation. That's foolishness. Cannot. If you're speaking with your father in the, in the line disconnect, he is still your father. Amen. But the fellowship got jacked up. And, and when somebody sits there and they calls out to the Lord and says, Lord, I, I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe that You're a holy God and a Savior. I believe that You came in the flesh and You, you lived a perfect life, born of a virgin, and that You died for my sins. I believe that. And, and today I confess my sins to You. I ask that You forgive me of my sins. I repent. And I want to accept Your free gift of salvation. Come into my life and make me new. If you've ever done that with a sincere heart, you are saved and can't nobody jack up your relationship with the Father to include you. Amen? But your fellowship can get jacked up. Amen? So we're going to go through the Scriptures. First one that we said was a software glitch and technical issues. See, if you take your cell phone to a store, they're going to tell you what the problem is. But you have a choice to whether to let them fix it or you fix it while following the instructions. So sometimes when we we get frustrated because we pray the Lord and, and things aren't happening. Here's one to prove it. If you're still not convinced that this is not biblical or if it's not true, here's one that will prove what I'm saying is true. Husbands, do not be harsh to your wives. Least your prayers be hindered. Jacks up communication. So I, I'm thinking to myself as a child of God, I'm like, Lord, if it's possible that if I'm mean to just my bride that can mess up my communication with you, then there's possibly something else out there that I can be doing that messes up my relationship with you and my communications are now all messed up. How many of you know that if you can call out to the Lord, call out to the Lord, call out to the Lord, and you hear nothing, how frustrating that can be. Amen? Y'all turn to Romans chapter 7 and we'll start to understand how some of this, why some of this happens. Romans chapter 7, verses 13 through 25. I'll read it real quick. And, and we have five more after this. So guys, please if, if, um, don't get caught up in trying to follow me in the Scriptures. I pray that, it, it, that you just listen today. I don't want you to be missing a word while you're trying to find some Scriptures. But if you, if you desire to go, then obviously you can go. Uh, Romans chapter 7. How many of you know that this is the Apostle Paul? How many of you just know that um, uh, Paul was, had it kind of figured out, right? He's pretty a big guy in the kingdom of heaven. He's responsible for two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul had it figured out. 
And if Paul says these words we're about to read, then I think if he had certain issues, then we're probably going to have an issue too. But what is the software glitch? What is the technical issues that we have with us? Verse 13, Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Y'all, I know these Scriptures are a little bit hard to chew on, but hang with me and it'll make sense. Verse 14, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer... I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. We have a software glitch, and it's called sin. It's called flesh. If you're living and breathing and you're listening today, guess what? You have flesh, and we have a software glitch called sin. We can't help it. As long as we're in this this sinful body, this fallen state, this sinful nature, and we're not in that glorified body yet, we will always have this glitch that we're always prone to do what we know is not right. Messes up communication. Until we're in that glorified body, we, it's hard for us to overcome that. The, the book of uh, Galatians says, for the spirit and the flesh war with each other. I mean, literally Paul says, you know what? I know what I should do, and I can't ever find myself doing it. But I know what I'd better not do, and I always find myself doing that. How many of you felt that? Say, I know, I'm going to start reading my Bible. I'm going to start doing A, B, and C. I'm going to start praying more. Guess what you will not do that following week? But if you say it like this, Lord, by your grace, by your strength, I will do this. Because then you understand a biblical principle. Apart from Him, you can do nothing. We can't even be right without God. It's not just God that saves us. It must be God who sustains us and teaches us and guides us all the way. There's a reason why He says the author and finisher, He's the one that takes us all the way through. He didn't just come to save you and then leave you alone and wait till you get to heaven and say, boy, that was rough, wasn't it? He came to save you and walk with you every day. Praise the Lord. I love verse 24. It says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Software glitch. We have a sinful nature. It's just in us to do the wrong thing. But we have to recognize that first to get in the Word and see how do we overcome it. How do we overcome it? By the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit says this. The Holy Spirit even helps you in what? Your weaknesses. Amen? Verse 25, praise the Lord. It says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, Paul goes, I thank God because of Him, not because I got really good at it. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but the flesh, the law of sin. We we have the Spirit in you, the saved, born-again Spirit within you. If you're a child of God, you desire to please God. You really do. But your flesh desires to please itself. And that's what we fight. That's the software glitch. Amen? Y'all turn to Galatians chapter 5 if you want. The second one that messes up our fellowship or our calls with the Lord, our prayer line, is um, geographical locations. I know, especially out here in the country, you get down in the creek bottom, it'll cut out and then it'll cut off. So there's different geographical locations that we can be. Different environments you can be and prayers get hindered. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21, it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. All right, a child of God, a true child of God will not practice those things, but they can mess up and do one or two of those things every once in a while, unless you're perfect. Raise your hand in here if you're perfect. Okay, no throwing rocks at each other then, amen? We all have a different flavor of mess up. 
So when you're sitting there you're and you're hearing those words or you're reading along saying, yep, I did that, yep, uh, well, man, I'm in deep trouble. No, your relationship with the Father never changed. But your fellowship can get jacked. Amen? If you bump over to Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, it says this. Why does that happen? Even a child of God, it happens to. Let him who is taught the Word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man... Everybody say a man. It means everybody. Lost, saved, it doesn't matter. He's talking about all mankind. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For if he sows to his flesh, will out of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So even though we get saved, there's times that we need to be in the right environment. We need to be doing the right things. Or your communication lines get jacked up. Amen? Amen. Battery life. <laughs> I love this one. I love all of them, if you can't tell. Ephesians chapter 5, battery life. Believe it or not, that a low battery, or obviously a dead battery... Um, will have, be susceptible of losing calls or messing up a phone call. You're more susceptible to have a drop call if you have a low battery. Now, how many times have you ever been somewhere and say, my phone's dead, can I borrow your phone? You know what that looks like in the Spirit? I ain't getting nothing. Will you pray with me? Can you... I mean, we can't be so haughty and arrogant to think that we always got it right. We always got it going on. No, right now, some of us, many of us, have dead batteries. We have batteries with one bar, 20%. Some even up to 90%. And they're, praise God, hallelujah, you ain't going to discourage them. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. They're just on fire. And we can get low. And, and when, before I read the Scriptures, I want us to understand something. See it in its context. The book of Ephesians is written to the church in Ephesus. Amen? It's written to the church. It's written to the saved. It's written to the saints. If you believe that, say amen. amen. It's not written to a lost person or a devil worshiper or a wicked witch. It's not written to them. It's written to the church. And what we don't understand is that some people will say this and they don't realize what they're saying. But when I got saved, I got everything of the Lord. You got everything available to you from the Lord, but you probably more than likely didn't get everything. If you did, you would be in heaven. Amen? And when people get saved, they get fired up. There's a season where they're just fired up and they're like, "What, man, I don't understand why people ain't reading their Bible every day. Why don't they go to church? It's normal to be in church every day. And they're like, you need to chill. You're freaking us out. <laughs> right? But when they first get saved, they get fired up and then somewhere along the way, they're like, man, I'm not going to church. I'm just... <laughs> their battery's low. Let's read. Verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What does that mean? Why is the Bible sometimes hard to understand? What does that mean? If you walk from that door to that door right now, it's easy to walk. But now if we went from that door to that door and we laid thousands and thousands of stickers all in the, in the floor, would you not be more careful? Yes, you would. Why? Because thorns hurt. Thorns are symbolic to sin. He says walk circumspectly. Walk. A Christian should walk in, a, in an evil world. An evil place should walk very careful because there's many things that can hurt him. How many of you know if you go with the fire, it'll burn right through them thorns? How many of you know if you go with the sword, it'll cut right through them thorns? Amen? Verse 16, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So many people go... It'd be your will, God. How many of you know there's many times that you can know the will of God if we, if we found it in His Word? Amen? Verse 18, here's my point. And do not be drunk with wine, but in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. He's talking to the church. What does that mean? If you looked up that word in original language, it means continually being filled. Continually being filled. Continually, are you listening? Being plugged in. Guys, it, 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 he showed me this. Okay, just a question. How long would your phone last 
if you plugged it in on Sunday for one hour Amen. and then went the rest of the week and never plugged it back in? How long is your phone going to last? It's going to be dead. dead. Hey man, are we seeing this? We get plugged in. We can all, and what are we plugging into? We're plugging into a power that I can pull from. We're plugging into something that is more powerful than me to charge me back up. And, and oh, man. All right. <laughs> Maybe it's just running up here on the stage today. I don't know. But to get plugged in or to get charged back up. Have you ever noticed that the things we plug into are always lower than where we're at? To get plugged back into the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord and get on your knees and say, Lord, I can't take this week. This week is Jack. I'm just, I need your help. Lord, I just want to praise you right now. Amen. 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 There is times that I do not want to praise Him. Church, can we be truthful today? There's times in your life you don't want to plug into Him. You, won't, you don't even want to have nothing to do with Him. You want to just chill and have everybody leave you alone. It is at that very moment that you have no choice as a child of God. You must get plugged back in. I don't know how many times, church, I've said this in uh, with nobody around me. Lord, I don't feel like praising You. I don't. But I praise You right now. I praise You for my life. I praise You for my wife. I praise you for my five children. I praise you for my health. I praise you for my home. I praise you for my animals. I praise you for my finances. I praise you for my job. I praise you, Lord. I praise your holy name. I praise you for Jesus, for saving me. Lord, you said that I w it used to be your enemy. You could have killed me and it had been all justified. You could have thrown me in hell, but you didn't. You saved me anyway. You caused the Holy Spirit to draw me to you and to confess my sins to you. You saved me. And can you not see, church, that when you do this, you get built back up? you got to stay plugged in. What's another way we can get plugged in? What does a plug have? Two prongs. Get plugged in. Stay plugged in. And I know this might hit some of the denominations in the face, but it's true. Jude 20 says, building yourself up in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, here's a question, church. Again, I mean this in love and respect, but here's a question. Why does the Bible, the Bible distinguish between pray always, pray in the Spirit, intercede, pray in the Holy Ghost? Why does it divide them up and describe them differently? Because there is different ways to pray. There is what they call praying in the Spirit. Amen? Amen? There is times that um, that is what we have to do to get plugged back in. And if you don't, you've got to go plug into somebody that does. I'm telling you, the Word of God is true. And it will help you today if you let it. Amen? Amen. Battery life. The number four one is weather. Cell phone. Every, on a normal occasion, this thing was working in this area all the time, but now a storm's coming in or cloud cover's coming in, and it's just not going to work as good. How many of you know that the Bible in Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, To everything, everybody say everything. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. If you've been living longer than five minutes, everybody goes through a season in their life, they're done. And it just seems like they're not, the communication is all jacked. Praise Him anyway. Praise Him through the storm. Sometimes the Lord will calm the storm and sometimes He'll call the person while the storm rages on. Did we hear that? Sometimes He will calm the storm. Peace be unto this, unto this storm. Peace. He rebuked the wind and the waves. And then sometimes He will keep you calm while the storm rages on. Here's a scripture in the Bible. Many Christians don't like to have it quoted. They don't like to hear it. But it's, it's just as important because we have to understand what are the issues. It says, therefore, share in the sufferings of Christ. You might be going through a hard time because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you so much so and He wants you to testify to somebody that's going through it next. You're going to go through it this week and you don't know why you're going through it this week, but you're going to run into somebody the second week while you're doing better, and it's just the same week you just had, and you can testify to them of God's power. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Overload of signals. Number five, overload of signals. Believe it or not, you can have a bunch of signals going on and you just, boom, they kick you off the airwaves, however, whatever terminology that is. Amen? You can have an overload of busy things in life. How many of us get real busy during the week and get distractions all over the place? Y'all have to. This is one of the Scriptures I do want you to turn to because I want it to burn into your spirit and you see it for yourself. You know where it's at in the Scriptures. It's Luke chapter 5. Please turn there. Verse 16. Something that can mess up our fellowship or our prayer life with the Lord is many distractions. The distractions of life. Um, the parable of the sower, there's four soils. There's the wayside, stony ground, thorns, and good ground. The third one is the thorns. And the thorns are the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of the world. It can literally, the Bible says it will choke you out. It didn't say knock you out. Sometimes I wish it would rather knock you out than choke you out. Because if you've ever been choked out, that's very scary. You'll have a panicky uh, sense come upon you. Distractions can do that. Distractions can, can panic you and can cause you to be choked out. But what did Jesus do? Jesus who is perfect, what did He do? Luke chapter 5, verse 16. So He, Jesus Himself, often, everybody say often, often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. He got away from the distractions. He got away from all the overload signals. And He pulled off to the side. It doesn't take much, guys. If you're at work, go into the bathroom. Hit your knees. If you can't go there, go out into the car. Sit for a minute. Listen to a praise and worship song. Whatever it takes, whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do, get away from everybody. Get away from everybody and pray. Say, Lord, I need your help. Get plugged back in. Amen? Amen. 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 Service area boundaries, number six. Psalm 118.8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. I'm going to read it again. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Everybody in here has different providers. Are you living your life thinking that you're providing for yourself? Or are you convinced that it is God who provides for you? Because if you're not convinced that God isn't doing it for you, it messes up your communication. Certain providers. I can take this phone to certain areas and it work and your provider doesn't. I can take this phone some places and mine ain't going to work and yours does. How many know that Jesus is our Provider. Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. And how many of you know this? There's no place. There's no low area. There's no high area. There's no place that Jesus the provider can't get to. There's no place He can't get to. Amen? There's no boundaries that stops Him. There's no, there's no sin in your life that He can't move past. There's, no, there's nothing that His blood cannot cover and heal and help. Amen? Amen? Are you feeling that you're the provider? Have you prayed this? Have you said, Lord, I need your help in this area? And then thought, but if you don't, I got it anyway. I've been doing it all my life. That's how our nature is. We have to understand and be convinced it is God who provides for us. Even the breath you breathe right now, He just gave it to you to breathe it. Amen? Amen? This right here is a Medal of Honor citation to Lieutenant Michael P. Murphy of the United States Navy. You might have seen the movie called Lone Survivor. I think it would be very appropriate that I read on Memorial Day weekend this soldier's Medal of Honor citation. It says, Lieutenant Michael P. Murphy, United States Navy, for services as set forth in the following citation. Y'all listen. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity 
at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty as the leader of a special reconnaissance element with Naval Special Warfare Task Unit Afghanistan. On 27 and 28 June 2005, while leading a mission to locate a high-level anti-coalition militia leader, Lieutenant Murphy demonstrated extraordinary heroism in the face of grave danger in the vicinity of Asadab, Konar, province of Afghanistan. On 28 June 2005, operating in an extreme rugged enemy control area, Lieutenant Murphy's team was discovered by anti-coalition militia sympathizers who revealed their position to the Taliban fighters. As a result, between 30 and 40 enemy fighters besieged his four-member team. Demonstrating exceptional resolve, Lieutenant Murphy valiantly led his men in engaging the large enemy force. The ensuing fierce firefight re resulted in numerous enemy casualties, as well as the wounding of all four members of his team. Ignoring his own wounds and demonstrating exceptional composure, Lieutenant Murphy continued to lead and encourage his men. When the primary communicator fell mortally wounded, Lieutenant Murphy repeatedly attempted to call for assistance for his beleaguered teammates, realizing the impossibility of communicating in the extreme terrain. And in the face of almost certain death, he fought his way into open terrain to gain better position to transmit a call. This deliberate heroic act deprived him of cover, exposing him to direct enemy fire, finally achieving contact with his headquarters. Lieutenant Murphy maintained his exposed position while he provided his location and requested immediate support for his team. In his final act of bravery, he continued to engage the enemy until he was mortally wounded, gallantly giving his life for his country and for the cause of freedom. By his selfless leadership, courageous actions, and extraordinary devotion to duty, Lieutenant Murphy reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Signed, George W. Bush. That man deserves a hand. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, when I was reading that, I said, here's a man who went into enemy territory, rugged terrain. He had him a communicator with him, a four-man team. They got exposed. Things got bad. They were all wounded. They all kept going forward. The primary communicator fell dead. He then picked up the communications device, went out into the open where he knew he would probably die, went up on a higher place to communicate back to headquarters that they need help. I could not, could not read that and know that story without thinking about my Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The primary communicator, Adam, fell mortally dead to sin. When they got kicked out of the garden, the communication line was severed. You can no longer come to the Father except by Jesus then. The primary communicator fell mortally wounded dead, and it was Jesus who came into enemy territory with all His wounds, went up on a high place, Calvary, and reestablished communications back with the Father. That now if you go by the blood of Jesus, you can now fellowship again with the Father. You can now, just everything is now fixed back in place. This man received the medal of honor. There's a reason why Jesus says He is the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts, the heaven's general, came down in enemy territory. It gave Himself His life in the enemy territory, and just ignored all the wounds, all the death, all the harsh speaking, all the ripping out his back and ripping out his beard, all the spitting and the lying and all the, the death speaking. He went through all of that and still carried his own cross up on a high place to bring back the communication back with the Father. Amen? This is what I love. He did that for his team. He did that for His people. Jesus did that for His team. Amen. For His people. And He wishes that people could see Him more. That He died and because He loves us. Amen. That man could not have done that if he did not love his teammates. Amen. He could not have done that if he didn't... He had to do something more than himself. 
And then not only then does Jesus it says He save us, He calls us to be that soldier of Christ like He did. He wants us to go beyond ourselves. He wants us to see past all of our wounds. If you're, if you're a child of God, you got some wounds. But the Lord Jesus wants us to move past our own wounds and do more for the team. Can we not see it? I mean, it, it, it only... It, it, it blows my mind how many times I believe the Lord is trying to speak to us and we, we're not seeing it. It doesn't, it is it a coincidence that the cross is, a, is a, the same shape as a telephone pole? The telephone pole brings communication back into the home, brings power back into the home. It's a constant reminder as we go down the road. I pray that it's a constant reminder when you leave these doors as your cell phone that God wants to talk to you today. God wants you to read His text message today. God wants to do more for you today. But you've got to get back in communications with Him. Amen? Amen? Please stand. Please stand. Pastors, come. Please. Band, you can come. Guys, in Jesus' name, I, I want to ask a, a favor of all of you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to close in prayer. You don't ever have to. You don't ever have to. You're all grown. You can do what you want. But I'm asking you. I'm going to pray over everybody. And I want you to stay here for at least one song and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Amen? One song. So as they play, right after I pray, listen to the Lord. See what He has to say. And then I pray that He gives you the courage to do what He's telling you to do. If it's to come up and to get re uh, uh, reconnected, if it's to come up to get plugged back in. If it's to come up to get your battery recharged, you need to plug back into the Lord. Whatever it is, this is what I love about our Lord. He gives you a choice. He will not force Himself upon you. He draws you with His love. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank You for these people. I thank You. Lord, I thank You for Your Word. Lord, I thank You for Jesus. I thank You for Your Holy Spirit who is here now. Lord, I speak courage. Encourage Your people to get plugged back in. Encourage Your people to go past themselves. Serve something more than themselves. Lord, encourage us. Draw us. Lord, You said no man come to the Father unless the Spirit draw us. Lord, we admit right now no fancy prayer. No pretty song can draw us, but Your Spirit can. So Lord, as they sing and as they play, we pray and ask God the Holy Spirit to move upon the hearts of the church and to draw them to get plugged back in. Lord, if they don't know You, Lord, I pray that they call out to You today and be saved. The time of salvation is now. Lord, we love You. We thank You for You. We honor You today. We praise Your name. It's in that name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Hey guys, thanks again for stopping by the sermon section. I hope you enjoyed the sermon. And I uh, just want you to know you don't have to be in church for the Lord to bless you. He will bless you right where you're sitting or standing right now. And remember that the time of salvation is right now. So if you want to call out to the Lord, you can call out to the Lord right now by yourself, wherever you're at, whenever you're doing. Just remember that God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's for those in Christ Jesus. So I hope you're blessed. I hope you come back to see us. And in Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you.